His life's work stands as an example to all. Dr. Ball was really a gentleman. A man of great honor, integrity, dignity, great Jamaican. Dr. Ken Ball represented the best of Jamaica. Kenneth Lee O'Neill Ball was born on February 24, 1941, in the parish of St. James. His early years saw him attending Springfield Primary School and Cornwall College. He later advanced to the University of the West Indies, UWI, where he studied medicine, becoming a surgeon by profession. During his medical career, Dr. Ball was Senior Registrar in General Surgery and Cardiothoracic Surgery at the University Hospital of the West Indies. He was also Consultant Surgeon at the Cornwall Regional Hospital, where he later became the Senior Medical Officer and Chairman of the Professional Doctors at the hospital. A humanitarian at heart, Dr. Ball gave of his time and service as a physician to care for others, a trait he continued when he entered politics. Dr. Ball was a member of the Jamaica Labour Party and served as a Member of Parliament for Northwest St. James between 1980 and 1987, and as Member of Parliament for West Central St. Catherine from 1997 until his retirement in 2015. He's most fondly remembered for being always available as a medical practitioner, day, night, any time at all, to provide support for his constituents in the medical field, whether they could afford it or not. In fact, most of the times, totally free. Dr. Ball represented the St. Catherine West Central constituency with distinction. In that same constituency, Dr. Ken Ball advocated for farmers and established a revolving loan scheme with the National People's Cooperative Bank, providing sustainable financial assistance. He also facilitated the distribution of power lines in communities and the electrification of homes through the Rural Electrification Program. Another legacy of Dr. Boy is that he championed the distribution of potable water in Kitsentown and its environs. In politics, Dr. Boy also served as Minister of Health from 1980 to 1989 and made great strides in advocating several health policies. Some of these include bilateral agreements that improved the primary health care system, streamlining systems for the procurement and distribution of drugs and supplies, and increasing the number of dental clinics to deal with oral health. He also collaborated with tertiary institutions to facilitate the expansion of manpower training at the basic and post-basic level. Other positions held by the statesman were Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, and for a short period, Interim Leader of the Opposition. This was when the late former Prime Minister Edward Siago was stepping down as head of the Jamaica Labour Party and former Prime Minister Bruce Golding was in waiting for confirmation as the new leader. The question was, during the interregnum, who would be the leader of the opposition? And by consensus, all MPs at the time, including myself, agreed that we could entrust this position to Ken Ball. Committed to service, Dr. Ball was also Deputy Prime Minister of Jamaica and a Senator, as well as General Secretary and Chairman of the Jamaica Labour Party. It was marked by his calmness, yet firmness, and how he was able to bring contending sides together without damage to the organization. He was able to settle a lot of disputes in a calm, reasonable fashion that only a Dr. Ball could do. Dr. Ball also crossed the political divide to ensure Jamaica's best interests were represented. When I became Minister of Health in April 2006, they gave me about an hour after all the members left an overview of the Ministry of Health. As opposition spokesman on foreign affairs and foreign trade at, the, at that time, I brought to this House a resolution on Cuba. And Dr. Barr and myself sat together and worked through um, the resolution, making some 
minor adjustments, but he offered a solution um, to what all of us knew was the correct thing to do, but it was taking on a partisan flavor. This nonpartisan position transcended to his advocacy of the most vulnerable in society. The situation, Mr. Speaker, of children being denied birth certificates because of the parents' inability to pay hospital fees must be discontinued. This practice makes a mockery of our agonized cries regarding the rights of a child. We must never underestimate the respect for rights and freedoms of our citizens, but also the responsibility we have to create a paradigm within which everybody operates. He also spoke firmly of productivity as a means to drive economic growth. This is a challenge to us now, to utilize the assistance available, to build capacity and to modernize our production, to increase, increase that component of industrial activity in terms of our gross domestic product. Dr. Baugh retired from representational politics in 2015 after 30 years due to ill health. In 2016, he was conferred with the Order of Jamaica for his distinguished service to Parliament, public service, and for his contribution to medicine. After battling with poor health, Dr. Baugh died on September 1, 2019. He was 78 years of age. He is survived by his wife, Vilma, and three children, Melanie, Warren, and Gregory. Good men must die, but death cannot kill their names. Dr. Ken Baugh is hailed by his colleagues as the consummate professional who gave the better part of his life in service for the people he represented and his country. He said very sharply and distinctly, I will never migrate. It was like a final commitment, he will never migrate. And he'd do whatever it is to help the people of this country and to make Jamaica a better place. I think his reputation for decency and goodwill earned him the respect of all his colleagues within the house on all sides. He was not about power, he was about service. And that is, to me, the signal marker of his integrity.